Hi, it's Bridget at Above Life Channel. This is a follow-up to the channel I just did with Freddie Mercury. I feel like I need to chat with you, catch up with you, so you guys have an understanding of the background here. Freddie Mercury is obviously the lead singer of Queen, and today, actually the date that I'm channeling this, is the day of the release of the movie Bohemian Rhapsody that, as I understand, is about his life or, or part of his career or that kind of a thing. Now, I haven't been a fan of Freddie Mercury. I didn't grow up with that genre. Um, and so I just know kind of the popular things, you know, about him and the incredible voice that he had, incredible voice that he had, and the We Will Rock You song and that kind of a thing. Just So not much limited. Um, but... I know he died of AIDS. And so for me, I really wasn't sure at what point I wanted to do the channel to talk to him about it because I, I suspected that I would get really emotional. So here's why. I'm going to share that with you. So in 2002, my dad died of AIDS, full-blown AIDS. And he died because he was a gay man, but he was hiding it. And... He was married and had, you know, children and he got AIDS because of sex, unprotected sex. And there was so much shame that he had and guilt that he had about that, that he never said anything to anybody. And so for years, for three years before his death, he went to multiple doctors. They did painful tests, bone marrow tests to see if he had cancer. They did... Um, they checked him for lupus, they, che they checked him for so many different things. And all it took, all it took was one little simple blood test to determine that he had AIDS. And it wasn't just HIV at that point, it was full-blown AIDS. And so by the time that we got the diagnosis in June of 2002, it was uh, just before um, Father's Day, and it, my dad called and and my mom actually told me, I think, I believe it was my mom that told me. I'm the oldest of the kids, the three kids. She told me, and then, and I wasn't surprised. I wasn't at all surprised that he had AIDS because it sure seemed like this mysterious illness that dad suffered with for three years, like horrible sickness. He would get sick and he couldn't get better and just really low energy and all this. Um, I wasn't surprised because when I was in high school in 1991, I had to do a, a speech and a big term of senior paper, and I did it about AIDS. Just happened to do it about that. I didn't know I was psychic then, but clearly I was, I guess. And then when I went off to college and I studied political science, I wanted to be involved in politics. I wanted to help people. Um, I ended up working actually in government. That was my career. I did ever went into politics because I saw how crazy it was and how mean people were and I didn't really want that. But now I'm on YouTube, so I really don't know what the difference is between that. <laughs> but anyway, um, as far as like the mean people, you know, you kind of get some of that. But I went to college and in college, I, I stayed for an extra year and got another, another major. And I actually had thought about going to Berkeley and, and studying human services, and I wanted to work with AIDS patients, with people that had AIDS. Again, this is long before my dad was diagnosed with AIDS or that we knew my dad had HIV. So when my dad got sick, he got diagnosed in June 2002, and then right before 4th of July, he collapsed at work and was rushed to the hospital, and he never left. And during that time, as you can imagine, my mom was going through a lot because this was her husband, and so she, there was a lot of layers of emotions in this, a lot of, you know, infidelity stuff, and a lot of major um, emotional turmoil for her personally that she had to sort out. And so, I, me being the oldest, I had to uh, make the health decisions for my dad when he wasn't able to. And so, I was the one that was responsible to make the choices when he couldn't make them, it was me. I remember the day that they asked me in the hospital, they asked me if I would be the, not, not the executor of the will, but the, the person that makes the health care decisions, like on the health care directives. And we talked about it, and I knew what my dad's wishes were. And uh, we just briefly talked about it, and he said, you can do this, right? I'm like, yeah, I can do this. I'll do it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. He says, mom can't do it. I said, I know. I'll take care of it. 
I didn't I guess I didn't realize how quickly I would have to, but I had to make some life, quality of life, term of life choices for my dad. And that's one of the most difficult things I've ever had to deal with. And I know that some of you that are watching have also had to deal with those things with your loved ones, with your grandma, with your kids, with your spouses, with other people in your lives. And I'm sorry. I know how intense, how incredibly difficult those times are, truly. And, but I knew, I mean, I have no regrets, no regrets, none of the choices I made, no regrets whatsoever, um, because I knew what dad wanted. He didn't want to be hooked up to machines and all that. So he went into hospice care in the hospital and died a couple days after that. So he died on August 1st, and it was a really peaceful day, I remember. And there was... The sound of machines, like he just had a simple, like a morphine machine thing. When I got into the room that day, that morning, after a very long night, everything was quiet. You know, I couldn't even hear the, the rattling like that you'd hear when he was breathing. There was nothing when they called me back that morning. So he had left. He had chosen to leave early that morning. And again, I wasn't psychic or I didn't know I was psychic at that time. But looking back, I can recall all these experiences I had in the hospital with my dad where I saw things and, and he was talking about things that weren't really there and talking about people that weren't actually in the room. And so I had all these experiences with him as he transitioned. And I think it makes me a, such a better medium and psychic now and a much, much better person, more compassionate and understanding for people who are at that point in their life, regardless of what puts them there, whether it's addiction um, attempted suicide, um, or, you know, cancer or illness. There's no, there's just compassion that's left at that point. There's just peace and compassion that's left and love, pure, the love, the kind of love that's pure that we refer to in human terms as unconditional, but it's not. There's con so many conditions attached to love. There's a purity that is just simply there. And I got to experience that. And so for that, I am grateful. I understand that there was a point and purpose for all that. And, and it's not wasted or lost on me in any way. So talking with Freddie and feeling his personal struggle with being who he was and really, and he wasn't like pushing, he was sort of pushing back on what people were trying to make him be. But he was like, he wasn't just rebelling. He was, he was pushing back saying, no, that's not who I am. I'm going to do and be and share and express myself the way that I'm, I feel like I want to express myself. And that takes a lot of courage and tenacity and persistence to keep going back to these different points of who you are, these different parts of yourself and exploring and expressing your person, yourself as a person, you know, and, and for that it takes a lot of guts, you know. From the outside, I recognize that it doesn't look like that to anybody. It might look like, oh, he was just crazy on drugs, or oh, he was just this, or he was just that. It's easy to kind of dismiss that if you haven't had those experiences yourself. In other words, if you haven't had the, the, the sheer raw courage or the opportunity to actually explore inside yourself and find, discover the different aspects and assets that you have, parts and facets of your personality, your humanness, and your spirit, the expression of your soul that can come through in your human life, if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, if you've held yourself so tight and restricted yourself and had resistance to that, then I can understand that you might not see or gain value from the channel with him. But I'm thinking and feeling that most of you will. And so I thought it would be a good idea to do this follow-up and share a little bit with you about my backstory, about my experience and how AIDS has actually touched my life as well. And... I feel like I'm a much I feel like part of the reason why I feel like I'm such an advocate for the spirit in the afterlife and at above life channel you might think it's about you as a viewer and it is I want to connect make the connections from the sessions that we have with these these incredible former people 
and the messages that they share. I want to make the connection so you understand it in your brain and can interpret it for your human life and get some inspiration, some nuggets of hope and wisdom from that. That makes your life better. That makes you feel better. But I am truly an advocate for them, that spirit, whether it's a spirit in a body like mine and like yours, or whether it's a spirit from the afterlife that used to have a body. I am such an advocate for that and the understanding and the insight that our soul and our spiritual wisdom provides to us. So that's part of the point for all all of this, all of this. It's not just a gossip and talk to celebrities in the afterlife. Because let's face it, for most of us, the only way we're going to talk to celebrities in the, is in the afterlife. Because in the real life, they're really not, a, you know, it's really not a thing. <laughs> it's not very easy to do that. So there you go. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching this follow-up after the Freddie Mercury channeling conversation. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have some comments or some additional things that you would like me to explore in future videos, go ahead and write your comments below. I do read my comments. Thank you so much for watching.